Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoag here. Thank you for joining us for another one of these Monday market updates. I had originally planned on talking about the bank stocks, uh, something we've been talking about here over the last few months. You know I love those the, the financials here in the rebound. And we see here with the bank stocks here in the Spider S&P Bank ETF, that's ticker KBE, outperforming the overall market by almost 7% since those June lows, rebounding 17% from June. Uh, here's the S&P 500 in red here with just a 10% move. And I think those bank stocks still offer some great valuations and excellent dividends. And I wanted to talk about that, but then something else happened. Shares of Bed Bath & Beyond, ticker BBBY, surged 466% in less than three weeks, but then crashed 66% in a matter of days. Uh, investors are pissed at, at a turnaround in activist investor Ryan Cohen, and, and they want answers. So in this week's video, I'm going to show you the shady side of activist investors, uh, how that happens, and what you need to watch for. Stick around after that, though, because then we're going to do our market update with the stocks I'm watching this week, all the news you need to know. First, I want to personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie. Our free market newsletter goes out every week before the market opens on Sunday night, giving you all the stocks to watch, uh, the best trends, the stock market news you need to see. It's all totally totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for the sign up link that I'll leave in the description below. Now to really understand what's been happening in Bed Bath & Beyond and kind of that shady side of activist investors, we have to look at the timeline here. On March 7th, Ryan Cohen announced his hedge fund, uh, RC Ventures, had built a 9.8% ownership in the company to push for strategic alternatives that could unlock shareholder value. You know, He argued that the company was poorly run and a spinoff of the profitable Bye Bye Baby segment could, could push capital cash, uh, provide cash and that time for the rest to turn around. So obviously the share shot up here 73% in just a matter of days on that idea that, that Cohen, who was also involved in another meme stock, uh, GameStop there, was going to save investors from management that had just destroyed the company. Next, we see the board of directors announced a cooperation agreement on March 25th that a four-member group of the board would be working with Cohen on those strategic alternatives, really find a, a mutually agreed solution to this, and the shares shot up again. You can see here that on that March 25th agreement, the share shot up again, almost to $30 a share on that idea that, that something could be in the works. But then just a general fade in the meme stock enthusiasm and a couple of horrible earnings reports that really went unanswered by management and Cohen himself uh, really sent the shares tumbling. Okay, here you see from that March 25th cooperation agreement, the shares just fell off a cliff. Uh, Cohen's average purchase price on his shares was about $15.35. So he was down tens of millions of dollars by that June low. And then miraculously, at least for Cohen, just as quickly, the stock starts getting hyped up again on those Reddit boards and, and surges in price. Uh, the price jumped 466% from the August 1st to a peak of $30 each on 817. But then Cohen shocks the market if filing to sell his entire stake and the shares plunged 66% in two days. And and are likely to continue to fall from here. You see that sell off here down from that peak of $30 a share on the uh, on the 16th all the way down to $11 at the close of last Friday down in the pre-market this week. So obviously investors are pissed, right? On a sale price of around $23 a share, uh, the billionaire Cohen would have made about $60 billion. So he was down about $75 billion at one point in June there. Then all of a sudden, miraculously, the stock starts getting hyped up again, and he's up $60 million. Uh, money that probably came from the pocket of a lot of Main Street investors there after that crash. Now, an investigation is already underway, and we're going to talk about what activist investors do, how that's supposed to work, and, and what might have happened here, as well as kind of a shady side of activist investors. Uh, but there's really two questions that need to be answered here. You know, why did he sell out so quickly? Activist investors are supposed to be in a stock to turn the company around, make it profitable, make everyone money here, and then sell out usually years later. Uh, but he sold out in less than five months, right? And so why did he sell out so quickly? Maybe he had a legit reason. You know, he had been working with the board of directors after that cooperation agreement for about four months. Maybe he saw that they just weren't uh, weren't actually looking for a solution, were pushing back against some of his ideas, and maybe he took that bump in the share price and the profits as an opportunity just to get out and cut ties. The big per uh, question, though, more importantly, he's going to have to answer if he had anything to do with that Reddit surge uh, or that meme stock surge uh, to drive the shares higher. 
So we'll talk about that idea of activist investors and kind of a shady side there. But for, for full disclosure and transparency here, I also want to say that I did own shares of BBBY. Uh, I bought 300 shares. I actually had in, in two accounts. Uh, you see here one, I bought 300 shares at the $1277 uh, in January, thinking that the sell-off was overdone. You know, it had, it had crashed from last year's peak. And I had seen some value in that Bye Bye Baby segment that, that Cohen later pointed out. I then bought another 500 shares at $22.66 on that Cohen announcement in March, um, you know, as well as doing a covered call strategy in another account that we'll look at 500 shares at a cost basis of $13.15. Like many investors, especially after that March announcement, I believe that the pressure by an activist investor was just what the company needed and could make something happen. You know, I like some of his ideas. I know activist investors are there supposed to be to, to turn the company around. I ended up buying another 1,700 shares at an average cost of $9.99 in June and September on a dollar cost averaging basis. On this recent run up in the price though, I did start closing out my position. I sold on 816 as the price seemed to weaken after that run up. You know, it really it hit $30 a share on the open of uh, $8.16, but then really had trouble uh, keeping that or maintaining that, uh, especially around $25 a share. And, and I was just afraid that the meme stock frenzy was uh, was going to be over soon and, and uh, drive those shares lower. So I did end up making a profit, just over $6,100 a profit in one account. And we could look at this other account that I had, the, the covered call shares here, I did lose. I was down 1,400 shares on that, so a net profit of just over $4,600 here. You can see the uh, the covered call strategy I was using here. So that's buying the shares and then selling the call options against that. I sold the call options uh, with a strike of $20, which really gave me gave me $5 discount on the shares when I bought them. I uh, lowered my cost basis down to $13 a share, and then I was able to sell out of those here on 816. Now, activist investors have gotten really popular over the last few years, uh, but a lot of investors don't realize there is a shady side to this that, that I actually saw while I was working as a venture capital analyst, as, as an equity analyst for many years. Uh, so I wanted to talk about what an activist investor actually is, what they're supposed to do, and you know how sometimes it ends up, they actually end up stealing uh, the money from the investors they're trying to help. Now, an activist investor, that can be on the short side or the long side, right? So the short, short sellers are uh, supposed to be activist investors by pointing out major flaws in companies, selling the shares, really helping the market find those fair values. The long side is what we usually think of with Ryan Cohen, Icon, uh, other activist investors. It's usually someone from a multi-billion dollar hedge fund, right? Uh, a fund large enough, it can buy up 10% or more of the company to, to get a seat on the board and really force those big changes, those changes that the board of directors just isn't willing to do just yet. Uh, and this is usually because uh, they think that either a sale of parts of the companies, like so in Bed Bath & Beyond, Ryan Cohen was saying that uh, they should sell the profitable Bye Bye Baby segment for a ton of cash because it was really profitable, it was really doing well. They could sell that, raise cash to give them time to turn the rest of the company around. It's either that or it's management changes or just something that they see that they can uh, strategically turn this company around, make it more profitable and drive those share prices higher. Uh, so the idea is they buy up those shares, those undervalued shares, uh, force that change in the market or in the company that drives the stock price up and then sell for a profit later out. But we see here data from hedge fund research on activist funds shows they've really under, underperformed pretty badly since 2007. So those activist investor hedge funds uh, in fact, the HFR index, activist index here, has lagged the S&P 500 by about 100% over a little more than a decade here. So we have to ask the question, might activist investors be trying to profit in other ways? And that really brings us to that shady side of activist investors. The first way they do this and make money off the shareholders they're supposed to be helping is what's called green mail. Uh, and this is how Carl Icahn largely built his $23 billion fortune. Okay, Icon grew up in Queens, graduated with a degree in philosophy uh, before dropping out of med school on what he called slight hypochondria. So not really the uh, the great start to, for a corporate tycoon, but but he did do well trading uh, trading stocks in the 60s, started taking larger positions there in the 1970s. And his first big attack was on Saxon Industries, right? He built up 9.5% stake, uh, just like what activist investors are supposed to do, trying to force change in that company. But rather than give him a board seat, rather than hear his voice and or hear the changes that he wanted to do on that company, the company just bought out his shares at an inflated price for a $2 million profit. 
And that's what Greenmail is. The company pays an inflated price, a higher price for those activist shares so they can just cash out and profit and go away. You know, it's kind of a bribe so the activist inv investor stops bothering the company, but it ultimately comes out of shareholders, uh, right? Because, you know, the company has to pay that inflated price for the shares. And after that, Icon was hooked, right? It's been his preferred investment strategy ever since in 1986. So just seven years there since Saxon Industries payoff, he made $21 million on Verizon shares in less than two weeks. Uh, he bought up the shares. The company paid him to just go away, paid him $21 million inflated uh, share price. Viacom at that point, Viacom was the 16th company in those seven years uh, to pay off Icon. Uh, the other shady way that activist investors can make money off the shareholders is just through good old market manipulation, right? They know that the shares are going to get a bump when it's reported that some activist investor, some billionaire hedge fund is buying up the shares to force a change at the company. So they wait for the stocks to shoot higher and then start gradually either selling their shares or they'll buy put options to protect that price even if the shares go down later after it's known that they're selling their shares, something like that. Uh, there are rules against this. They're not activist investors and large institutional funds. Large investors aren't supposed to just buy up stock uh, to, uh, to manipulate the market higher and then sell out, but it does happen. A more risky and more illegal would be some kind of behind the scenes market manipulation. Here again, we see that timeline and Cohen's cost basis of $15 a share left him deeply underwater at July's low, around $5 a share in Bed Bath & Beyond. So he was down as much as $75 million at one point. Uh, and then we see that miraculous rebound, that that surge, that meme stock frenzy that started again in uh, in August with the Reddit investors started talking about the stock and, and all of a sudden he makes $60 million in less than a month. Now folks, we have known for more than a year that these hedge funds and these billionaire investors are running software that downloads Reddit chats and AI and algorithms to analyze those, to really front run on a lot of those stocks, see which ones are getting the most atten attention. Uh, and that's not illegal. It is not illegal to use public information to, uh, to, to devise an investing strategy, right? The, it is possible though, and this is the question that needs to be answered, is you know, do some of these billionaire investors have lots of accounts set up, you know, dummy accounts, basically to start that chatter and to start a stock heading higher. So that's what needs to be investigated right here.